Welcome everybody to Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company, Thursday afternoon, Facebook Live. I'm here with Brett Wingfield, Tom Matuska, and uh, nice day in the Iowa Great Lakes. Weather report. It's warming <laughs> up a little bit, but it's Not windy. Uh, it we were talking to some people the other evening and they were looking for a place to retire. And I thought, why would you leave this? And they said, <laughs> everywhere we go, we're looking for places that don't have windmills. Why would you go to a place that doesn't have windmills? Because there's no because wind. Because there's, no, there's wind. no wind. There's no windmills, and it's much more pleasant than the weather we have sometimes. We have some pretty gale force winds. I fish with somebody that absolutely insists that we didn't have any wind until those darn windmills showed up. <laughs> <laughs> we got them. We got them. <laughs> and I just heard on the news today that they uh, are planning on 40 to 90 more. Where? Oh, we I don't know, have but room then, for then more. it will really be windy here. <laughs> it will it'll really be windy. <laughs> we can't do that. Uh, uh -huh. And we haven't seen the ice cream truck yet this year. No. He'll be coming around one of these Thursdays. Yeah. Yep. yep. Ice cream man should be coming. It's, it, was, it felt like ice cream weather two weeks ago, and then it turned right back around to not ice cream. And we got weather. money to spend because one of our kind viewers we took pity on us it. and <laughs> sent us money to... By the, the yeah. Yeah, yeah. by the first round. Yeah, by the first round. If you joined us last week, uh, we, you saw us set ears, our method of setting ears. And if you saw it and thought, why would anybody do that? I hope you try <laughs> it because um, the first time you, you try, it's going to seem like it takes a long time to do it. And it'll be hard for you to get your symmetry um, right ear to the left ear. But if you do it and follow our procedure, you're going to be amazed at what nice ear butts you have. And you can use um, any kind of an ear, really. If you use the ears with the preformed um, ear butts on them, we used yeah. to cut those off all the time. Just cut yeah. that portion off, yeah. and we'd round okay. it a little bit so it didn't telegraph through the skin. Yeah. Do the same process with the clay. Um, now we oftentimes get either the um, Ultimate Ear Liners by Kerry Cochran, or sometimes the Ohio 360 ears, we cut the little yeah. ball off, um, yeah. or Clint Rickey's ears. Um, there's there's a uh, lot of different ears out there that don't have the ear butts on yeah. them, and they are very conducive to mounting your ears, building your ear butts with clay, and you're able to shape all the time. Yeah. I'm a great one for, um, I do birds and, and deer ears kind of the same way. Oh, it looks a little better like this. Nope, down a little bit. Oh, I kind of liked it back. Okay, I'm going to put it back. And pretty soon you have a mess. Um, <laughs> if you do that with, uh, with the clay, you can position your ears before you ever build an ear butt and then build it up slowly and your ears are where you yeah. want them. Then you're not done yet. You mount the deer, glue those ears into the skin, mount the deer, and you still have wiggle room. You can move yeah. those ears a little bit. And that's the best part of it. Um, with the cast poured ear butts that a lot of the companies have, or with the ear liners that have the ear butts on them, you can't move them a You're quarter stuck. inch back yep. or up or down, and it leaves a big air gap, and uh, your skin will yeah. follow that in and leave yep. you issues. So it works very well. Um, watch our uh, broadcast last week and give it a try. We use it on yeah. we use it on everything. We do, and you mentioned several of the really nice ear liners. Also, our fabric form ear liners come in a hundred different animals. So if you're not just doing deer, there's a whole bunch of them there. Every too. species you can imagine. We have three yeah. sizes of kudu. We have Cape Buffalo. We have we do. giraffe. We have a couple <laughs> sizes of zebras. Bongo. A couple gems bucks. Yeah. Um, yep. And that's uh, all compliments of Gary Zayner. Yep. Um, a lot of you maybe have not haven't heard Gary, Zayn Gary Zayner. He was a um, taxidermist from the Milwaukee area and had a supply company. And he had um, his mannequins that we carry still rival a lot of the people doing work today. They are. Um, they are he was ahead nice. of his time in detail and expression and look real good. But anyway, his ear liners, he had all these made oh, molds man. of all these exotic yeah. animals yeah. that you can't buy an earliner for. Yeah, tremendous library of them from, you mentioned exotic African stuff, uh, and a really good array of North American yep. stuff too, yep. a couple different sizes of bears. Bears and mountain lions um, and bobcats and fox and coyotes yep. and 
Um, we the love them. They're made of uh, thermoform plastic. They adhere to glue very, very well. Um, you can easy trim. Yep. 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 They're really nice to work with. So, so give those a try too, especially if you get a African shipment in and don't quite know what you're going to do. Don't want to go the Bondo method. You were going to show them the Bondo method too. I was. Mm -hmm. I was. <laughs> and uh, we will do that sometime because that, that is noteworthy. Um, the only reason I make fun of Bondo ears is because I cannot do a Bondo ear to save my soul. Uh, <laughs> my Bondo either. ears come out lumpy and bumpy, and hence I make fun of them. And then, <laughs> you know, um, there's a lot of That's people out there doing bonded ears, bonded or Bondo ears, and are doing an exceptional job yeah. with them. I sat yes, at the table with Joe Combs at a seminar one time, and he did a Bondo ear on a short haired white tail that my mouth dropped open, and I thought, yeah. I can do that. And I went home and I tried for an entire season, every deer, I botched the ears. So there's people, there's a method to it. Yeah. There's a learning curve to it. Once you do it, it's, there's no taking cartilage out, um, split them to the edges and it's an excellent yeah. way to go for many people. Yep. Faster method than what we do. <laughs> yeah, faster, but still no shortcuts. No. That's still a process. Yeah. Um, and today we're going to go into eyes. Mm -hmm. um, the deer that we did, uh, we put ear on that guy last week and uh, popped the ear off and we just stick them in a bag if we're not ready to mount them and that one's yeah. been hanging there for a week. Yep. We and it um, it. It it's still, still as long as you're in a plastic bag and I think um, that has oh, a wet yeah. towel in with it, like just take a yeah. paper towel if you're not going to get to it in a few days and dampen it and throw it in with the bag and just let it yeah, hang on your hide and air on your form and it's ready to go. I'm that, this is still pliable. It's not gonna crack. And that's um, been a week. Yep. And this it's coated with the, the hide paste, which is gonna hold yep. it all together. Yeah, so that little damp cloth, this is just uh, creating a little humidity inside mm -hmm. the bag. And you can see the glue is even still uh, white. It's not even translucent yet, so. Um, if you wanted it to firm up the night before you decide you want to mount your deer, just take it out of the bag and stick it back on the mm -hmm. mannequin, let it harden up a little bit more. It's already nice and firm um, and would mount great just like it is right out of the bag now. But So a lot of times we have every intention of getting a couple deer mounted tomorrow <laughs> and we do the ears tonight and paint them with, uh, you know, Pro One or Derma grip, grip or whatever kind of a adhesive coating that you want to coat your clay with. Next day we come in and something comes up and we don't get around to it. Um, this is how we handle them. We put, yeah. them in a, put them in a plastic bag and just pin them to the form yeah. and we'll get to them. Like my wife says on her um, her telephone, I will get to you in a week or a day or a week <laughs> or a month. Um, um, Tom Ross says these are always very informative. Thank you very much. Yes. We, we try. We'll at least tell you what not to do. Yeah, <laughs> we've done everything not to do. Um, so let's go through a few eyes and we'll show them just a, uh, a few variations. I know the eye industry is up in turmoil now and there's a lot of people concerned about if they're gonna get eyes. Um, <clears throat> we have had um, delayed shipments, but we've always had eyes. We haven't yep. run out of eyes. Yep. And um, there's still some good companies out there making eyes and, and uh, don't worry, there'll, there'll be eyes, otherwise, Somebody will come up with something, a better, better mousetrap, I'm sure. You know, and a, there are a lot of eyes out there. We get in the habit of running downstairs and go directly to one spot and grab one particular eye. Um, but there's a lot of really good eyes out there. There is. And we, we brought several of them up here that some people may or may not be familiar with, but I'm and they're all different. Some of them. Yes, they are. Um, it seems like a company will come out with a style of an eye. Another company will um, come out with a similar style, but it's different. It might be higher profile, lower profile. Um, and then it, they just kind of, it's like the cork Photoshop type thing, <laughs> yeah. you know, where yeah. um, one company tries to outdo the other one. Um, so there's a lot of different kind of eyes out there. When I started, all we had were, con they're called concave convex. Um, I'm not even sure if, Van Dykes was probably just starting to make eyes at that time and all of ours came from Jonas sure. Brothers. And they were very high profile and they were like you took 
a ball and cut it right in half and then extended sure. the walls a little bit. They're a little yeah. deeper than a half a circle. Um, but uh, that's how we started. That's all we had to work with. And there was a lot of really, really good um, um, animals mounted with those type of eyes. I think one of the, Tohican came out years ago and I think uh, Payer also has an eye like this. This is an aspheric eye, aspheric. And I'm not entirely sure what a spheric is, <clears throat> but it's a, it's a sphere. Um, but it's a low profile eye. This eye is not very high yep. compared to many. So depending on the eye that you get, that you purchase, watch how deep this gets set because the mannequins that you're buying are typically sculpted for a certain depth eye. Yeah. So if I use a low profile eye on this deer, it could look sunk in. If I used a high profile eye, it could look bulgy. So yeah. you, may, you may go to a seminar somewhere and, and somebody said, boy, I only use this kind of eye. It's got an excellent, you know, da da da. And you yeah. get it and the eye is really, really high and you don't have the same satisfaction in your eye set as that person did in the seminar and you can't figure that out. Um, maybe, maybe this has to be reset to yep. accept the eye that you're choosing or Absolutely. vice versa. Yep. This is a good example of two very, very popular eyes, the pre-rotated and the, the um, defined, defined cornea. cornea. Yep. <laughs> um, and just sitting them on the table, I don't know if, Kate, if you can zoom in there. Um, yeah, yeah, look at the there height you can difference. Go. Um, the height different. Two, two very popular, both from the same company. Those are both payer eyes. Um, and if you look, there's boy, that's a quarter inch, an easy quarter inch. There's a pretty significant height difference there. So, so neither of them are wrong, but put against the flat back of a mannequin, you're going to have two totally different eye sets, and and you may have to uh, adjust the back. So like you're going to have said. to be real observant, looking at at live deer and don't look at them through binoculars go to a <laughs> go to a game park or somebody that has deer and just observe them as well as um, we have lots of good photos um, through the supply company as well as a deer reference book with eyes as well as dvds yeah. with hundreds yeah. of pictures of eyes and by looking at enough of these you're going to be able to set an eye and say it doesn't look quite right. Is that not the best picture ever? That is a great one. That is a picture of our tame deer buckwheat and in his eye you can see the gate to the deer to the yeah. fish pond and the, the door that goes out the back door and the steps coming down and the trees way out here <laughs> yeah. you can see. Is that not good? And there's a that's a really nice neck to tail membrane just looking at that. And that's something too um, that you mentioned, nictitating membrane, we have white-based eyes or all brown eyes. So you need yeah. to make a decision, are you gonna put a membrane in or not? Um, I, will tell, I will tell you what I did and then you tell them the right way to do it. Um, <laughs> when I started, years and years and years ago, the Jonas people would do African mounts with white corners of their eyes. And I thought that was so cool because these guys got it going on. Yeah. You know, if you worked for Jonas, you were somebody. So I, would, you couldn't get white eyes. There were no white eyes that I knew of. So they had them in their catalog, but you couldn't get them. So I would take my eyes and I would scratch them up and I would mask them off with electrician's tape and I would paint white and I would put really? white in the front corner because it's pretty yeah. hard to do afterwards oh, after bet. they're mounted. <laughs> so then the goal was to mount that without um, scratching that off, mm -hmm. which was kind of hard too. So that's how I did my white-based eyes. And uh, every animal that I did had the same kind of white corner in the, in the eyes. So, that's impressive. And I didn't know um, where the nictitating, I, I really didn't know what a nictitating membrane was, you know, but um, I, so I would put these white in the front corner of the eyes. Then the company started to come out, like Tohican, I think probably would have been the first one, to come out with an eye like this, 
And so I thought, ah, I don't have to paint it. So I would put them in, but I didn't know what a nictitating membrane was or that deer had them. So I would put this in and people would come to, you know, look at my deer, pick up their deer and they go, wow, are they really that white in the front corner? Oh yeah, state of the art, you know. My, <laughs> that's, that's what you paid the big bucks for here is that, that white, yeah, you know. I didn't know that a nictitating membrane rested in the front corner of your eye, which really tempers that white a considerable yes. amount. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I had it going on. Very, very nice. So you tell them the right way. I don't know the or right way. Right that way. sounded that sounded fantastic. Yeah. I would do that. <laughs> oh, question. Yes, Eugene Beasley wants to know if we have the blind eye in stock, and we do. Uh, he also wants to know if they come on blind and one regular eye. Nope, two pair. <laughs> it's a sales technique. <laughs> You have to find a friend who wants. Um, do we sell them individually? The we should, shouldn't we? I bet you could. I think singles. I bet you could. I bet you could sell singles. Um, we've had that question before. It's kind of nice when you call to see if we have something that um, Kate can just can type it in from her camera yeah. and tell people. And say yes. That's <clears throat> the best part. She can say yes. Um, so, oh, question. You yeah, one go. more that just came. In, and I think it's a comment from Ted. He says, "Look at the angle of the eyelids on your buck. Not what you, not what you would expect to see." Ooh, which one? From probably from here, huh? I guess I am not exactly for oh. sure. I bet, I bet he's referring to shape, and we'll get to we will get to that. Probably talking about how round That's the round. eye might look. That's really round. Um, and that's, mm -hmm. that corresponds, not to pass up where we were, but that goes along with attitude. And the attitude of the eye, as he gets more and more alert, more concerned, will really round out. It'll shorten up, get a little bit taller, and a lot more round versus a sleepy eye like a that one. So, oh, yeah, Minnesota. And he did say buck. Buckwheat? That would be this one. That would be buckwheat. Um, yeah. And we did just, oh, he said, I meant eyelashes. <laughs> oh, eyelashes. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, these, yep, these eyelashes come down. What, what is it? Is it Disney? Eyelashes yeah. are the only ones I that always, go up? I always told students, um, out or down, never up. Bambi yeah. does the up thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's a Disney thing, sure. Uh, Tom Poss would like to know, is there any way to fix a cracked eye once it's mounted? Sure. Yes. We've done it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We've done it a lot. Um, it's, not, it's, it's daunting, but it's really not that big of a job. Once you get to it, you can rehydrate it. As long as you use a material that can be rehydrated, and we'll talk about eye setting materials later, but um, as long as you've used some sort of a, a stoneware or a, a, um, some sort of a clay, that can be rehydrated, soak it up. You may have to inject a little bit of water underneath the leather, um, and then you would just take that eye out right through the eye opening and replace it. You know, and that's a, um, that process, like you said, is daunting. It's like, oh my gosh, how are we gonna set an eye through the eye hole? And um, it's not as hard as, as you think. It's way different than what we do when we mount a deer. Um, but I went to a Kerry Cochran seminar one time. He mounted his deer with no eyes in and did everything through the eye hole. And he, it was the best eye set you've ever done. He did not set his eyes ahead of time. He wow. did it through the eye hole. Um, it was wow. at the Iowa Taxidermy Association. So um, people, different people have different methods. And again, it's how yep. well you do what you do. Yep, yep, absolutely. absolutely. What else we got for fun eyes here? Um, we do have, so you brought up the white based eye and there's several different versions of eye styles, but another white based version after the, after the eye that has white all the way around, I think they call that narrow banded, um, is a pre-rotated eye. Mm -hmm. So this one is going to help people um, with the rotation of their eyes to make sure that they don't get, um, or that they do get enough rotation so that one, the front corner of one eye um, 
rotates all the way in, doesn't show any white, and the back corner does, and then the opposite eye you would set the other direction, and it would have white showing. So you've got and a strong three-eighths of an inch of white on yes. that, on the yeah. high side, on the wide side, compared to mine. Mine is probably under a quarter. Yep, yep, all the way around. But now that's another, that's another tool that you can use as a pre-rotated eye. Those come in, um, they come in the defined cornea and the not defined cornea. Um, Optech? Yes, yep, Optech. Optech. And then, um, then you have several other versions. Um, we have a defined cornea here. This is a competition mule deer, mule deer. eye. Um, that's a brown, that's kind of, yeah, brown that's, scleral membrane. Um, they've got a lot of that brown rusty color in the scleral membrane around there. Um, but that's another one that, that not everybody thinks of when, they, when they're ordering eyes, but that's a nice one if you were doing a batch of mule deer and wanted to, and wanted to get a different eye in there. Um, that's a good one. And all these eyes, um, every company calls them something different. You know, like, like this might be Tohican's Optech. Yep. Payer calls them something different. Yep. Uh, Payer has to find cornea. Um, Tohican has a different um, word, like maybe implant quality, the IQs or something yep. like that. So, so you probably won't get the same term from company to company to company. Mandy's probably shaking her head because we don't have this right on the tip of my tongue. Um, we have, ju it's just noted as a pre-rotated, so it, it's not necessarily noted as anything other shape-wise, but we do have the defined cornea. As, <clears throat> as the shape here. So you'll notice this is just a little bit more round, um, less definition to the cornea. And the idea, some of the, some of the white banded eyes and the different styles, I don't wanna say aren't for beginners, but beginners beware, because yes. the, the object is, is to show a little bit of white in the front corner or the back corner of the eyes. If you would, were to take an eye like this with that huge white scleral membrane and put it against a mannequin, which most of them are meant for an eye like that, yeah. um, you are going to have a great deal of difficulty, I call it tempering, holding down the amount of white that you're going to yeah. show. And he's, you might want your deer looking a little to the right or a little bit to the left, but this one's going to look like he got a hot shot in the rear end, and <laughs> yeah. he's like really got a lot of white showing. Um, eyes are like wheels on a car. You turn the wheel, eyes go like this. Yeah. So you have to think, and there's even companies that sell a uh, spade bit sure. that you drill in and a globe that goes on the back yeah. of the eye type of an affair. And eyes are like this, they rotate like a globe. Yep. So. If you wanted to show white in the front corner of his left eye, you can tip that eye a little bit, but you have to override this angle. So you're probably going to have to cut a little bit in the back so you yeah. can tip that eye, and then you have to match it on the opposite eye by going the opposite direction. So if this one goes like this, this one's going to go like that too. Yep. So one will have to go front corner in, the other one will have to go back corner in. Um, that's something too to mention when you're doing rotations in eyes is that because of the molds, the, the rigid mold, the eye socket has to come out of, we really can't get that front corner, the definition to the front corner. Wouldn't get the mold out, get, yeah. get it out of the mold. Yep, you, you wouldn't be able to get it out. So that's, that, you'll have to basically carve that front corner out of almost every mannequin out there because these are made in rigid molds. And what he's talking about is right up in here. Yep. So that you can set the white in a little bit or yep. out a little bit and probably the same back here. Yeah. If you, if you tip the eye this way, you're gonna have the edge of your glass exposed back there. So you're gonna have to dig it in and tip it and make sure that you have it covered by the back of your yeah. eye too. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, we've got a few comments and questions that just came in. Andy Jorgensen says, I see people using pre-rotated eyes and put both of them forward. You can do that. I always uh, um, 
kind of likened it to if the animal is looking close or far. Sure. Um, the closer something is to the face, the more white you could see in the, and these yep. are my unauthoritarian <laughs> type, you know, versions. Um, if they're looking but, at a distance, their eyes, yeah. you're apt to see more white in the front yep. corner, but don't overdo it. Yep. If they're looking to the left, white, white. If they're looking to the right, white, white, you know. Yep, lots of rules of thumb out there, but nothing beats reference. Here's a nice picture of a deer, no white in either of those. Um, in the front corners, um, just a nice you know, forward looking deer. That's a good point too because this is an old standard standby aspheric eye and there has probably been more exceptional deer mounted with an eye like this yeah. than, than any other high priced $25 eye. Yep. You know, there's not a thing wrong with an all brown eye and you can look at all of our good, good pictures here. Um, I do not see white in any of these? I've got a good one here on the back of the book. Um, before, before you attempt a, anything out of the ordinary, I would really strongly recommend that you have great reference and there's a, good a whole bunch of things going on with this deer that make that white show, but um, there's a good example of quite a bit of white showing in the front corner of that deer, but there's a lot going on. His head is tilted and his eyes are leveling. Um, he's also looking really hard to one direction. Um, and so lots of stuff going on here. If you were to just take this on a standard forward looking deer or just a, a regular shoulder mount and try to do this much expression, I think, I think you might struggle. Um, there's a lot of things that have to happen. We always, if, if we do something like, like that, um, set it up, set the eye in, don't do a whole lot of eye work. And if, it's, if, if you've done a pretty good job, stand where you think that deer should be looking. Yeah. And is he looking at you or is, or is he missing you? Is he looking over here? Um, you might want to adjust things. We do that yeah. with animals all the time. And when we uh, taught students, they would have a raccoon up on a fence post and a coyote snarling at him, jumping at him. And the raccoon is snarling over here, but the coyote's right here. And the coyote's jumping at the raccoon, but the raccoon's over here. You, yeah. have, to, you have to make contact. So yeah. whatever you think your attitude is here, picture what's that deer looking at, or fox or coon or coyote, yeah. and position the viewer there and yeah. direct your eyes to the viewer. And that can be hard. There's a lot of, di we got a lot of different colors here. Um, when you order deer eyes, I think you can get a light brown. We don't yep. carry a light brown, I don't think. We Maybe have, a couple we have of them, one. Don't we? Yep, we do have one uh, light. And light's light. It's not a right or wrong color. It's kind of where the sun is and, and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, a lot of these pictures, we have deer eyes that look black. This, this deer photo looks really, really black. Yep. And um, they're not, our deer were never black. You could almost always see the pupil, but it just depends on where the sun was and how much light was coming through his lens. Um, we have, here's a lighter one, um, much lighter. And this one's pupil is huge. It's just a giant pupil, but you can see the colors. Um, so you're gonna have a light iris to work with. Oh, look at those. Um, Look at how light this is. Yeah. You're gonna have, and over here, um, you're gonna have light irises to choose from, you're gonna have medium irises to choose mm -hmm. from, and you're gonna have dark irises to choose from. The dark ones can be very difficult to see. We, all, we used to put yeah. a piece of tape on the, shine a flashlight yeah. from the back side, shine a flashlight from the back, and then we'd put a little piece of tape across the lens. Yeah line it up with the pupil so yeah. that we didn't set, because we couldn't see the pupil, we just set the tape at the right angle. Yeah. You know? um, whereas if you were to get a lighter colored eye, you can see, see the pupil and you can level it with the floor. Yeah, um, and that's pretty interesting because that pupil yep. is level, but his nose is pointing down and that's, we're getting, we might be getting ahead of ourselves. Until his yeah. nerve gets stretched too yeah. far, I yeah. think. Um, then his eye know. twitches. 
people always say, uh, um, you know, the, the pupils will always level with the ground. Joe Meter once told me if it, was a, if it was a voluntary action like drinking or eating an apple and it had time to level itself like a level in a bubble, mm -hmm. um, if, it's, if it's voluntary, the pupil will level as far as it can. If yeah. it's involuntary, where an arrow just went like that and he went fast, that eye actually has to take a second to level itself. So that's what I always went by and it worked pretty yeah. well. Yeah. Um, we might be getting ahead of ourselves. Do you want to, should we go through how to set them and what to set them oh, in? Yeah. This or should a we go more through fun yeah. stuff here too? Yeah. Um, um, these, tell them about those. We've used those a little and those were very We fun. have, and this was Not one Not by choice, it wasn't our idea to do this. Yep, we had a customer request for it and thought we'll give it a try. We have them, we may as well try it. We use them a lot with our mammals. Um, and this is a reflective eye, um, just like the um, bobcats, the mountain lions are very popular with the mountain lions, bears, a lot of people use them for bears. Um, but this is one that, if I can get it out of the box here, out of the wrapper here, that know. has a reflective quality. And it's actually a very nice eye, very, very nice eye. Um, Ooh, look at that. I don't know if Kate can see it. Um, your phone might be, I wonder if you can shine from above it. There we go. Is that going to get enough? Any anyway, there's there? a really <laughs> pretty reflective um, kind of turquoise aqua backing yeah. behind there. Yeah. And it's, uh, I wasn't excited to use them. I was the deer that we did was a pretty impressive deer, and I thought, oh man, oh, I don't want to do that. But the customer was pretty excited, and we did it, and we liked them. They look nice. They look very, very nice. Um, and they're not reflective unless somebody shines a light in them. I mean, the light has right. to be just right. So it's not like you're going to have. Remember Van Dykes? Yes. Maybe they still yeah, have, the, them, have those light yep, up eyes, night eyes. Predator. <laughs> yes, night eyes. That's exactly what they were. You're right. Um, no, it's nothing like that. You wouldn't know that these are reflective unless you shine a light directly into them. And they're a great looking um, eye. And they, they really are. They make a nice eye. They are acrylic. Um, all of the reflective eyes are acrylic. You have to be careful with that when you set them. Um, but just a little tweak to your process. Go away from metal tools and go to plastic or wood. And um, we haven't had any problem with them. A lot of people so. are afraid of um, acrylic plastic. Yeah. Um, they're afraid of it, but don't be, just change your method. Use, yeah. uh, don't use solvents on them. Yeah. Most of them say you can, but you, if something happens, you don't want to have to take them out like the craft yeah. eye. Yes. Um, so <laughs> use uh, Elkhorn water or Windex or something yeah. like that and Q-tips to clean them. And then also wood tools or plastic tools and you'll be fine with, um, they yeah. actually mount very, very nice. Um, they really do. They're, they're a nice eye. Um, there are a few other eyes, too, that are along those lines. I mean, you want to show them? Wayne Cooper Flex Eyes. Um, these are a great looking eye. Um, and they're, they're like they're, um, they're hard, not like the fish flex eyes. They're right. cast. Um, very nice looking eye. This would be an acrylic again. Yep. Um, I might see if I can open this carefully. And the acrylic eyes, there are ways. Um, you know, we use a lot of... A lot of um, bird eyes that are acrylic and they work really good. Um, I did have somebody tell me the other day, why would you, why would you use a $30 pair of eyes in a mount that's not going to be around for 30 years, you know, or something like that. <laughs> um, I just rubbed them on my pants. There's a little bit of static, um, but that's actually a very nice little eye. Um, great shape, great, um, great shape. Um, oh, and they are flexible on the edges. Um, yeah, that's a kind of a forward look. I don't know. Can you get a side shot of that? Um, oh, that yeah, is a pretty that. shape. Yeah, that's a real nice shape. Um, they're they're fairly dark. I'd call that probably a dark eye. We don't mm -hmm. have them in different colors, but um, we do have the white, the slight white base and the not white based, the solid brown. Um, and those are from Wayne Cooper. Wayne Cooper, we've used his fish eyes forever and his bird eyes. 
Yeah, um, they come with uh, eye rings already on them, and they're all they're all a flexible eye. I would not be at all afraid to mount that. Mm -hmm. um, that would mount really nice. That's a nice eye. Great. Um, and what else do we have? Um, that's it for eyes, I think. You think? Um, there's and we still have the standards. We still have the the regular pre-rotated. We have. Um, define cornea. And they come have... define cornea with the blood vessels yep. in it, you know. Yep. Um, I always get real excited and I show my customers the, the blood vessels in the defined corneas and, and then when I mount them I, I take down so much white that there's very little. I think I have to yeah. over exaggerate them just to appreciate the blood vessels. Um, so there's a lot of different kind of eyes still out there and the options are still very good on the eyes that and uh, yeah. I think uh, um, Tony from um, Tohican is coming out with a whole new line, probably. A little ways out, it sounds mm -hmm. like, but um, be excited to see what they come up with. And there's a lot of different options out there. So um, should we tell them a little bit about once they get there? What to do with them? Yeah. So get them. Pick your poison there. Pick whichever <laughs> one you want to use. Um, um, I like them guys. There you go. Um, this is... This is a defined cornea with blood vessels. Um, I will open those for you. Now that would be, I'd call it a high profile eye. So you're gonna, you know, you can see this is pretty high. So to set it in your mannequin, depending, on how you handle your top lid and your bottom lid. I don't think it's going to be um, abnormally out there, but by tilting it a little bit, you're going to get it in yep. to where you would in a spheric. Yep. It's not going to be sunken in anyway. It's not right. going to be protruding like a frog either. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And if we're going to put those in, what are our choices to use? Um, that's a Great question. There's everything out there for options from stoneware, just regular stoneware clay. Um, we use that forever. Um, and this is, it's not quite as, doesn't dry quite as hard, but there's no reason that this won't work. Um, a lot of people still use stoneware clay to, to set their eyes. Stoneware clay probably will crack and I never noticed it to distort, but it's not super strong but yeah. with hide paste and your skin over it, and that leather dries like a rock, it's never, you're never gonna yeah. know. Never gonna move at all after once everything's dry. But if you were to leave these set overnight, um, this will crack. Um, you'll see it. And It'll if fall you on the floor. Gonna, yeah, <laughs> if, you, yeah. if you don't uh, cover them, they will be on the floor. Um, when what I liked morning. about the, the softer clays was when you set the eye, you could put the nictitating membrane in after everything mm -hmm. dried by just taking a little eye tool of some sort and scratching in the front corner and that will just dust right out of there. Yeah. <clears throat> Slip in your nictitating membrane. We always use the cat or the vacuform nictitating yeah. membranes or little pieces of plastic and dig it out, keep sliding it in till you had a nice recess, fill it full of epoxy sculpt or um, mm -hmm. fix it sculpt and slide it in there. And it was that was the best part about that yeah. when we started using critter clay that's a yeah. much much harder clay yeah and you don't scratch critter clay it you yeah have to this make a slot ahead of time this dries pretty hard um you do have to be a little bit more aware of how your clay is going to dry um, when you use critter clay but it's great we used it last week when we set our deer ears and you can see it held together really nice it's nice and firm but it is a clay and it can be rehydrated, so, and the stoneware clay can be rehydrated too if it were dry and you wanted to move it, or um, like the, the viewer had asked, if Crack we needed eye. to remove it, um, these two options would be really good. And I would say there's a large percentage of people that are using critter clay so today. Too. Um, Animal seems clay to or be the choice. Clay, both yes. Clays. Yep. Um, the stoneware moist, if you had to take that eye out, you could soak it up and it will come out the next day you can take it out. Critter clay might take two or three days and you might have to take it out in wet chunks because yep. it's, it's a very hard yep. product. Um, and 
um, rehydrating critter clay works really good to go in with a syringe and get under the leather and sometimes under the clay so you've got moisture on both sides of it. It will rehydrate, but like you said, it's much, much, much slower. Um, so those are options that can be moved and changed and adjusted. Some people that are very brave and, and confident. very good at what confident. they do, yeah, confident um, in their eye sets, can use an epoxy. Um, this is a, this Fix-It Sculpt is a great option. If you wanted to go with an epoxy, it will dry light in color. Um, you've got mm, probably an hour of good working time, but maybe a little bit more if you needed to, to adjust things. Um, but if you wanted a, a for sure definite non-moving eye set, um, you could do that with, with Fix-It Sculpt. I know some people will do Fix it sculpt with their ear bases mm -hmm. um, for competition mm -hmm. deer, just because I've done that. they they want them to be hard and and lock into place and not move in the mounting like process. Like a purchased so. deer of their choice, their position. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so that's an option too. And then it, when you go down the line of epoxies, there's anything would work. Uh, epoxy sculpt, fix it sculpt. Uh, uh, Rick's clay mm -hmm. would be another option. That's a fast one. You'd have to work fast with clay, but um, any of those epoxies will work too, but um, you would have to have a little bit of pre-thought to this. You would, if you're tucking an eyelid with an epoxy, you have to allow for that gap that you would tuck it into. Um, otherwise, you may choose to tuck or to cut your eyelid completely or your, I should say, eye skin, not lid, but the So you don't skin. have the apron to tuck, yeah. Yes. A yep. lot of people do that. Um, and that works great. You can, you could glue around the perimeter and, and put it right up to the edge, mm -hmm. and, and that would be a good option for, for epoxies. Mm -hmm. um, what else? What am I forgetting? Sounds good. Should we set um, one? Yeah. Yep. Um, and we do one quick, and what do you want? Um, you're going to have a uh, choice eye tools. Yes. Yep. And um, I I always used uh, I always kind of made one. This this was my one of my old eye tools that I had made out of brass rod. Okay. Um, I have a big end here, kind of on a thin down hockey stick, and I just drilled holes on each end and put it in an antler. Yep. This was my eye modeling. I've got a little finger sanded out areas there so it held in my fingers. Oh my gosh, that's from 40 years of using that? You got fingerprints in the yeah. antler? It's kind of like those uh, um, carvers that the Indians used yeah. to use, those yeah. hide scrapers. Yeah. Um, um, this was to cut my lip slots, you know? I did everything with this. Yeah. If I lost this, work ceased around the shop. Um, now there's all kinds of different purchased, uh, um, here, this one's kind of the same same format. This was developed 40 Might years be. before I ever bought this. Um, and this is just probably stainless steel of some sort. Yep. They come in different different variations. Sometimes this is thin, this is a different shape. You can run them over your sander and you can sand them or different shape, shape them with a Dremel. Um, the Zyme tools, and I'm not sure I pronounced that right, but uh, XIEM, these are great. They come in lots of different formations. Um, this is a very sharp cutting edge. This is a real nice um, this works great for tear ducts, yeah. cutting that slot. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, is this called the ultimate tool or something like that? Similar, similar only ceramic tool, I think yep. it's called. Yep. Um, same shapes, thinner metal. Um, and then I always like using a brush, like a paintbrush like this. Yeah. Um, this one. I use for setting eyes, and it's nothing more than a kind of a flat brush that I took a scissors and cut the bristles down, yeah. so it gave me a little more backbone. Yeah, um, that's really really nice, especially when you're adjusting skin to use a soft brush. Um, gives you a nice soft eye. You say it gives you a softer look, and I say I wouldn't know a soft look if it jumped up and bit me. No. Um, other people find these very helpful. Um, they're, they're rubber tipped tools. 
you know, kind of nice little rubber tip tools like this? Um, that would be a good option for um, acrylic eyes. And then um, I think there's a few of them like this yeah. with bigger tips on them. And those two are going to give you a real soft look. Yep. Um, another one that I really like, um, Mandy found these last year. And it's just, it's a simple paintbrush, um, but it has an acrylic end that's already beveled. Um, works really good as an as a eye tool. And then you have the brush on the other end that works really well to adjust. I think that's, you said an angle shader, I think. Um, but these are handy, they're, they're inexpensive, keep them clean, and um, if you're just setting eyes with this, this one's, gosh, this might be the original sample that yeah. she gave me a long time yeah. ago. Um, but they stay together really well. Um, another one, I like this one, this is my... Those come in all kinds of sets. You'll find one yes. of those in a specific set. Yeah, that's my tool that everything stops if I can't find it. There's probably four of them floating around here somewhere. If you uh, but buy a set of so. 10 of them, you might get one yeah. that you know, yeah. your favorite one. Yeah, that, that one's my favorite. Um, but anything that you can use as a sculpting tool all the way down to a popsicle stick, if you wanted to put that on the belt sander and shape it a little bit, um, wood tools work really well, especially with acrylic eyes. You can make yourself a sculpting tool I still like those really round easy. little uh, bamboo, bamboo tools are yeah. some of my favorites. Yep, those are nice tools. So anything to manipulate the clay and then manipulate the eye skin um, on the other end would suffice for an eye, for an eye setting okay. tool. You wanna show them what to do with all this stuff we showed them? Sure, you wanna tell them as I play with it, you wanna tell them about angles and stuff like that? You better tell me what to say. <laughs> well, you talked about them working like a car. Um, we have a handout that we, we have given away at a, different shows just kind of we have people come up to our booth and we usually have the um, um, extreme precision people there and yeah. and doing demonstrations so if you ever come to our booth take advantage of their oh, ear man. setting techniques I know at the Nationals we'll have Mark Gonnering probably Brian Olson um, there and they will be teaching how to set ears and they will show you then they will have you show them and it, the, the people that aren't afraid to do that, they're not gonna laugh at you or anything if you do something no. funny. Um, but take advantage of that because it's a huge learning benefit Absolutely. to have them show you. Absolutely. But they'll show you how to set eyes and all that kind of stuff and they'll set one and pull it out and give it to you and say, here, you do it. And then you'll do it and they'll you know, yeah. constructive criticize what you did. Uh, yeah. But we give these away for passerbys and it's deer eyes, attitudes, and setting guidelines. And the thing I would suggest is have a plan for ears and eyes and attitude before you start taking stitches. Yeah. Because, yeah. because sometimes you can get ears listening in a certain attitude that don't correlate with your eyes and vice versa. So have a plan on what do I want that deer doing? So. What do you want this deer doing? Um, I think this deer was basically, I think we can have a little bit of angle, looking a little bit of a direction, but he's going up on a pedestal. I think he's gonna be basically straight up in, the, in a room, um, no particular focal point. So I don't think we would do anything extreme with him. Okay. Um, but maybe just a little, we'll show a little bit of white in one corner and, and uh, a little bit in the, the back corner of the opposite side. And do have an idea of the height of your animal too. So yes. if you're mounting a, a mountain lion comes to mind that we did way up high on the peak of a uh, room and he's looking down and the room wasn't very wide so he has to make eye contact with a person 10 feet out from the wall. Um, that makes a huge difference in how your mounts look. Yeah, um, and that reminded me um, before we do anything, be sure to level your level your your mannequin, um, both the back and the eyes, left and right. We've kind of pre-done this one. You can see this is a pedestal, and we have a pre-marked level line, so that's on there. That's already done. But if if um, you're following along, 
at home, make sure and level, we should have a little torpedo level. You can put your level right here in the front corners of the eyes, um, here, here, rest it right across the front like that, and that will give you a really good uh, reference as to how square the head is. And if it's not level, um, don't be afraid to adjust either your mounting stand or your bracket um, if it needs to be adjusted. Or, you know, some of, some of the older African mounts, every now and then you'll get one that the eyes aren't quite square to the shoulders and we're not afraid to cut the head off and, and, uh, and do that too. And um, we do the level thing a lot, and I, no matter what it is. Um, a lot of times on especially pedestals, wall pedestals, life-size, all kinds of life-size animals, when we get the body at the attitude we want, we'll take a level, like even a big carpenter's level, and we'll put a line on it so that we'll do everything according to that level line, whether it's eyes or ears or whatever, and he will go on his base that way. Yes, and that way, this allows us to return him back any time during the mounting process, we can return him back to level, um, and we, ha we just have a good reference point, but um, you can see this, this guy's sitting pretty level as it is, and if you needed to double check, you come right here, you can kind of see the front corner of the eye. I'm gonna try and stay out of the way of the camera, but um, you would come back there and let that level touch the front corners of the eyes see that the bubble is level, and then we know that um, we have a good level starting point. At least we're starting in the right place. Um, because this one's going to, we'll have him look this way just a little bit, I'm just gonna go in the front corner here, and um, I'll turn him carefully, Kate. Hopefully you can, he'll stay in picture. Yeah, there we go. Um, and I will take that front corner out just a little, not much. I really, I, I know who sculpted this. I think they're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not, I don't want to change a lot. I know it's kind of funny because um, one of the things I've heard Tom say to students so many times, and it just makes me laugh a little bit, is we'll see students that get really brave and they'll start whacking and cutting and moving and changing things and and that's okay it's all foam that's why why it's foam you can move it and change it yourself if you want to but if you do we hope that you know at least as much or more than the guy that sculpted yeah. it um, so um, I've just taken a little bit out there knowing that we that I want to give this just a little room and and I also want to be able to rotate the eye in this direction so I'm going to say maybe I need to take a little bit out of the back as well. Yeah, I think I'm going to take just a little out of the back and take a little of that rotation out. While you're doing that, I'm going to yeah. show them something here. Um, up in that front corner, you notice he's digging out the front corner. Um, there's a lot of anatomy that goes on up there. Don't crowd your glass too tight to the styrofoam up here because you want to leave room for your caruncle as well as your, your nictitating uncle. membrane. Oh. So you need room for those and if you smash that clay and glass tight up to that styrofoam, um, you're, not, you're binding, you're not gonna be, get, be able to reconstruct this in there. Oops, I'm gonna make it look the other way. Um, so that's gonna be enough on that side and also worth noting, as you're setting your eyes up, we're going to kind of focus on one, but make sure that you're setting both eyes and getting them to the proper depth. And if you build a bottom lid on one eye, build the bottom lid on the other. When you build the top lid on this eye, build the top lid on that so eye. So don't and that, finish one, right? Yes. Yep. So don't take it all the way to completion and then go and set your other one in because it's much easier to get them to match um, if you do them together. Another tip, some of you will have trouble um, as you mount your, mount your deer and as it dries, your eyes start pulling away or your skin starts pulling away from your antler burrs. And that 
Um, when I first started taxidermy, I patched the first dozen deer that I ever mounted around the antler burrs. I had other capes that I would cut a little crescent moon out of and, and antlers grew up under that burr because they shrunk away. That was for a couple of reasons. One, I'm sure that I never thinned my skin, your burr skin around there and the top of your scalp. Make sure that you thin that really, really well. Also, sometimes people will mount their deer antlers oh too far back and yeah. there's a lot of forms out there that have extended you know yeah. wood blocks in them and by sliding this a quarter inch too far back now your skin can't make it to the eye yeah. itself yeah. so make sure that you thin all this skin really really thin now we know everybody does a good job of getting the nostrils and the lips and the nose and getting all that really, really thin, but don't forget the thin, really thin around the eyes and this skin around the burrs because thin skin doesn't have power to shrink back away from your burrs. Once I learned how thin you wanted this skin, um, I didn't have to patch around there all the time. And sometimes I will even take a measurement from the eye orbit bone to the burr and I will make sure that when I set those antlers that I'm pretty close to that measurement. <coughs> um, yeah, those are super, super important tips. Now, um, here and we're keeping them longer than we probably intended, so we'll We started last. Oh, we did. Um, <coughs> I might grab a marker here. Um, we're going to start with a few angles. We don't want to get too complicated, but um, if you were to think of the back of this eye on a plane about here and kind of the same here, um, that would be, if we brought that all the way forward and this all the way forward, well, that's about a 90 degree angle if they were looking straight forward. Um, and we can use a little right triangle to help you with that. Um, we kind of put them in, give a little tip now and adjust them slightly. And uh, so we're pretty 90 degrees is 45 and 45. Yep, yep, sorry. Yeah, 45 and 45. So if, that, if those two eyes at 45 needed to look a little bit further to the left, like this eye, then both of them would turn. So that 45 degree angle would change, and this might be 43, and this might be 47, um, by, by just adjusting that slightly. And not to get too far into that, but that's, um, that's an important angle. One other angle that is important is the back of the eye. So if I take this other eye here, it's flat here on the flat side. Um, we're going to tip it down just slightly like so. We're going to rotate. And what is, what's the range you hear? Two to three degrees. Yeah, a few. Um, I've heard all the way to six or eight six or, or ten. Eight. Yeah. yeah. Um, but a few degrees, if you put it in flat and then just kick the bottom out slightly, do the same on the other side, you'll be in the ballpark. Um, and again, if you were... If your deer were doing something exceptional, like on the back of that reference book where his head was tilted and he was looking way over, you would want to spend a little more time on that. But um, for what we have here, I think we've got a, a decent start. Now here's where you'd want to use your flashlight and check your pupil yes. for a level to the floor. Yep. Make sure that your form is level to the floor before you level your yep. pupil too. Um, <clears throat> that is exactly right. And this being a medium eye, I can see the, the pupil and I kind of leveled that as I set it, but you would want to come in here and make sure that your pupils are, are level. And I think we're pretty close right through there. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, we do both sides. I'm just gonna focus on this side because nobody wants to be here past <laughs> year 30. Um, and this is a fast process. We're doing this yeah. and explaining as we're going, but to set a pair of deer eyes is probably a 15 minute job. Yeah. Yeah. With the experience that you've had. 
Um, another thing for those of you that haven't done a whole bunch of it, um, symmetry is probably one of the things that people struggle with the most. And it will help you. We talked about weighing the clay on e deer ears, ear butts. Mm -hmm. um, one way to make sure that you have the, the same amount of clay on one side as you do the other is to roll out a piece to whatever width or thickness you want and then break it in half. I'm going to leave this over here, and I'm going to use this for this side. You never taught me that. <laughs> you taught me that. Oh. Um, and uh, so I'm just going to start with a little, just a <laughs> little bit here on the bottom. And I'm going to bring this into the corner. We'll do a three-corner eye set. Do we have a picture of a three-corner um, eye set? I don't know. Set? Can you get this, Kate? <clears throat> on this handout, we're going to, we should tell them, you're going to get a nice um, reference photo book of eyes like the ears last year. That's the giveaway today. And we'll throw in um, one of these handouts. They're, they're pretty handy and kind of self-explanatory. But can you maybe zoom in on the different pictures? Um, Three-cornered eye set, what he means is um, the first corner that's always a corner, um, you don't have to hunt for it, is in the front corner of the eyes where his um, car uncle is right there. There's a white arrow. From number one to two, it's actually a pretty kind of a straight erect up and line, up and down line. From number two, the lid shape from number two to three, depending on his attitude, can be sway backed it, on a real relaxed one. It can be straight which is hard to make look nice. It can be domed or it can be really, yeah. really rounded depending on how alarmed he is. So you got a three-quarter die set. From number three to number one, depending again on his attitude, um, is a big swale. And depending on how alert he is or how relaxed he is will depend on that, determine that shape. Corner two, sometimes is not necessarily a sharp corner. It can just be a change in direction. Number three can be not very distinct corner. It can just be a rounded back surface. That's kind of where it starts heading from, from the back of the eye back around to the, to the front. To the front. Yeah. So but some it. lucky winner is going to get this and the book. Um, and what do they have to do? They don't get it now, but the people from last week had to like and share, like and yeah. share, like and share. Yes, so like and share this video right now for a chance to win next week's giveaway. But it might not be a good one. Oh, it's always a they're good always giveaway. Good. They, are, good they are always good. Um, and so this one went, mm -hmm. if, if we go to the three corner eye set, we started at corner number one and we went backward to corner number three. That lower lid, I've got pretty light. Um, not real heavy, um, pretty small diameter. One thing that's really helpful um, to you guys that haven't done maybe a whole bunch of them, the tendency is for people to want to put a whole bunch of clay up here. And if you will spend your time and focus solely on the shape of the eye, and don't worry about any of what meets the mannequin, but, but start with the shape of the eye first. Um, I think it will save you a whole bunch of work. So if you look here, I've got a very small amount in the front. I've got a nice lid that goes from one to two, and I've already got that in place. And then I'm just gonna bring this clay back here to corner number three and I'm just gonna break it off like that. I didn't do anything to model that onto the mannequin at first, so I've just laid it in place, and I already have a pretty decent shape without ever manipulating the clay. If you, if you stand here, which some of us have a nervous tendency to work this clay, and then you come up here and you work it and you work it and you work it, it ends up to being very dry and crumbly and it doesn't work as well versus put it up here, get it in the place that it needs to be, and then lightly blend it back into your mannequin. Um, 
and you really never even have to do much to the much around the glass. If you notice that glass is pretty clean, I don't have a whole bunch of water spots on it or dirty clay or anything just because we started with the waiting for me to say it, the glass. Uh-uh. No. Yeah. Say it. No. <laughs> um, and remember before you start, determine your attitude. Um, look at this very, very relaxed eye. It's not open very far at all. That deer is not alarmed. He's probably just laying out in the grass, chewing his cud. Nothing's alarming him. Here's another one. Very, very natural look for a deer. Some people would say sleepy, and maybe he is. As compared to, look at this deer. <clears throat> and I remember the day that I took this, this deer, Buckwheat, was very alarmed of dump trucks. And he had an accident when he was a little baby fawn and got hurt pretty bad. And so anytime a dump truck went by on the highway, he got extremely upset. Um, that's when I took this picture. But look at how round this eye is. That's high alert alarm. We kind of, for customers, want to do something not sleepy, not alarmed. If you're having a, like I said, a arrow flying past his face, you know, or something like that, maybe the alarm thing. But for a nice customer mount, um, I like something like this. Nice, nice eye shape, just exactly what Brett's got going there. Um, that's a customer pleasing eye. Just kind of soft. And um, there's some anatomy here. The eye, of course, is going to, like our eye, you'll have a little crease up above. Um, we're going to leave that out until we get the skin on it. And then we'll do that all at, one, all at once. But we'd have a little bit of a, the skin will tell you how much that upper lid crease you need. And so if you put it in now and your skin didn't match it, um, it wouldn't wouldn't work as well so it's nice if you can bring your skin up and and do that a little bit later but that's just kind of a start to get something ahead else in the I right want to show you is <clears throat> everybody is so um, ingrained that shrink is bad and and don't um, you can't have any kind of cracks or anything like that or separations um, look at all of these deer eyes of live deer look at the gap or the sag between the lower lid and the eye itself. Look at the great amount of sag here between the lower lid and the eye. Um, those are literal gaps. Don't fill that in with yeah. epoxies. Um, work with it. Paint it. Make it look lifelike. Look at the, the distance there. Um, that's really fun to paint a little bit of flesh down in there um, and bring your eyelid up to it. and and don't try to putty everything shut. Yeah, that's old a, people when they get old <laughs> get like this. Um, that's a nice comment. It's I am just going around here with a brush to make a little accommodation for us to tuck skin into. But yeah, that's that's really important too. Is that you don't fill that in. Um, that's just kind of where we would start for an eye looking in this direction. Um, a few things to notice. The front corner one is below center of, of the eye or right at center. Um, corner two is the highest, is the highest point. Three is higher than one, but lower than two. So you have a nice little soft little slope here. And then the belly, the lowest point of the eye in this position is right about the center. And I, I think we're fairly close. I could actually push that down if I needed to and maybe push that down just a little bit. But um, So the lowest point here is at center. The highest point here is in about the front third to front quarter. And then three is higher than one. And two is your highest corner. Good job. Um, we uh, Now, we're not going to mount this probably tomorrow, so what we would do is take a wet, damp paper towel or a cloth, yeah. put it across the eyes, wrap it with a little bit of saran wrap, 
plastic wrap, um, and that will stay like that for a week or more, yep. um, kind of like the ear in the bag somewhere. Yep. <clears throat> it would be ready for us when we're ready to go. And should we give away? They get yes. the little photo book, hand me that. And this has a lot of the, lot of the pictures from our, our big reference book. Um, here's my shop picture in the front. <laughs> That's still the best picture. There's a lot of, lot of eye pictures in here. And those uh, are great pictures. They get this, and we're going to send them one of these also. And the winner is? The winner is Travis Fuller. Travis Fuller, congratulations. You are a big winner. And real quick, we do have a couple questions that have okay. come through. Uh, Eugene Beasley would like to know what pa paint techniques would you do if you painted yourself? Painted the eyes? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let Brett tell you about that. <laughs> um, um, I've never painted a deer eye. Have I? No. Uh, well, the front corner of one. Um, but other than that, think you would have to approach it from a fish. We'd first have to start with the lens. If you're, if you're talking yeah. about painting from the very beginning, um, that be, would be a very complicated... We've talked about it yeah. every day, probably, mm -hmm. especially when eyes were getting scarce, yeah. but we've never, I've never attempted it. I have not either. I have not either. So. My big fear is they're going to have to be baked on, correct? Yep. An enamel or something has to be baked on so that the paint doesn't chip off later and that's a science project yeah. in itself i think yep. give me an easier question yeah okay mike cottrell would like to know what causes an eye to crack after being set oh you probably man. have more insight than i do because <laughs> they're they're throwing the hard ones at us um i think a number of things could have could be factors it could be humidity it could be epoxies it could be things like that but um we did have a batch of eyes that we had to pull out of some when I was with Cabela's mm -hmm. years ago. Um, you came and helped us with that. That mm -hmm. was an overwhelmingly scary project because there was we a were lot of mounting. Them. There were there were a whole bunch. They were of them. mounted and finished, and they had cracks right down the yep, center. Yeah, ready, waiting on a customer <clears throat> to pick up, and you look at it and go, "Oh my gosh, how did that happen?" And it's just a crack right down the middle or down the side or not no no rhyme or reason. But what we did find out was that. The most eyes have a lot number on the back of them, and they were able to track that back to a batch of eyes that the kiln had shut down when they were in the baking process. Um, it, it didn't somehow the temperature didn't cure properly, and um, they were fragile. It wasn't every single eye on the card, um, but it was a random one here or or one there. But it was traced back to. A certain event on a certain date, and they were able to. And we pull had them some off. eyes a while back that came from yeah. the manufacturer that were cracked in yep. their little bubble packs, right? Yep, yep. And that was the scary thing that we had encountered um, when we had that is we had cards of eyes, and you would see one, maybe, but um, then you'd see 10 deer on the wall. So they were cracking on the wall more frequently, but they had already started to. So that, that you would think would be some kind of stress put on by the only thing that you used was the clay, right? Yeah, we, we only used clay with them. There wasn't really anything. I, I suppose if um, you had an impact to a card full of eyes and you didn't realize that there were little hairline cracks, that could do it too. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. gosh, in all the years we've done this, we haven't seen that. We've been lucky here. Yeah. And then John Bellucci would like to know what eye were you using to set that deer? That was a defined cornea pair pre-rotated with blood vessels. Oh. I get a gold star from Mandy. Yeah. Oh, you really? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm declaring oh. that because <laughs> she would be proud. Because um, I couldn't remember the term. John would know more about eyes than anybody yeah, and probably absolutely. knows why an eye would occasionally crack. Yep. And then Jim Reichs would like to know, how do you determine the size, 28 millimeter or a 32 millimeter? We go with 32. Yeah, I think most of our 
uh, XP series, our Sagebrush series, our CC series, even Gary series, I think were sculpted for a 32 millimeter base. Uh, that's the base yep. size, is that correct? And we've measured a lot of eyes and we've oh, cast man. some eyes and you've yes. cast a lot of eyes yeah. where we have measured the portion that would make an artificial eye and 32 is a, just a good Gosh, number. It's, um, yeah. Some people use 34s. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the 34. 28 is a little small for me, Yeah, but you see people do it. Yeah, I wouldn't have any problem putting a 34 in a deer or even a 30. Um, and a 34, you would it, have to enlarge your orbit a little bit, yep. just equally all the way around. Yep, just to get it to set, but you would still keep the same size and shape of the yep. eye. Might show just a little less white um, in a pinch. Um, of course, not ideal, but in a pinch you could do that. And then if you were to really show an extreme rotation, um, that 30 might be a way to go if you mm -hmm. had a smaller deer. Mm -hmm. But 32 is what generally what we use. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and we'll have something fun for you next week, whether it's painting a crocodile or tanning a rhinoceros. We've got both to do. <laughs> we do. We 